So hi everybody, my name's Emma Lindley. I'm Chief Commercial Officer for a company called Trustamp. And today we're going to talk to you about biometrics. So what is something you always have with you, but you always leave behind? Your fingerprints. So fingerprints are the skin patterns at the ends of your fingers and thumbs. If you look closely at the tips of your fingers under a bright light, you can see the bumps and the ridges that make a kind of pattern. And that pattern goes with you throughout your whole life. It goes with you everywhere. And the bumps and the ridges leave marks behind. You might have seen these marks on a window or a piece of glass or even on a piece of paper. But we always have these fingerprints and we always leave these marks behind, even if we can't see them. Right, are you ready for an activity? So, all you need to check out your own fingerprint is a pencil, a piece of paper, and some tape. So first, we're gonna take a piece of tape, a pair of scissors, and cut off a piece. Now, it doesn't have to be too big, just enough to cover your index finger. So we're going to place this down on the piece of paper, sticky side up. Then we're going to take our pencil and make a really dark mark. Make it as dark as you can. Then take the index finger that you're going to create your fingerprint with and rub it along your forehead, right next to your hairline. This will pick up some extra sweat and oil that will make sure your fingerprint comes out really nice and clear. Then we're going to take this finger and press it down on that dark mark we made. Let's press it down and roll it slightly left to right. Then we're going to take this and on that sticky side of the tape we're going to press down firmly. Now don't roll it at this point. Make sure that it's flat down. This will prevent your fingerprint from smudging. We're then going to pull it up in one swift motion, take our tape, turn it over, put it on our piece of paper, and smooth it out. Can you see your fingerprint? Scientists have discovered that there are three main patterns when it comes to our fingerprint. The loop, the whirl, and the arch. I think mine looks like a whirl. It's pretty cool. And you know what's even cooler? Each of your fingerprints has a different pattern and nobody else's are quite like them. You have fingerprints that are unique to you. When you get bigger, your fingerprints get bigger, but the patterns don't change. Your fingerprints are truly a body part that makes you, you. The fact that everyone has fingerprints is pretty useful. For example, the police can use them to identify if criminals have been there. The other thing is that fingerprints can be used for is either a key or a password. You might have seen this yourself and when you've been opening your phone or your tablet. Fingerprints are in a category of science called biometrics. Biometrics are body measurements, calculations related to human characteristics. Now there's lots of different types of biometrics because there's lots of different types of the body. For example, there are facial biometrics and also palm biometrics. There are also two different types of biometric. There are those that are related to the physical body, like I said, with face, or palm, or even iris, but there's also behavioral biometrics, for example, the way that you might type on your keyboard, or also gait analysis, which is the way that you might walk. The interesting thing about biometrics is because they can be turned into maths and measured, they can be turned into maths, they can be turned into computer code. And the computer code can then be read, which means that biometric measurements can be read by computers. And that's super useful because biometrics are unique to us. And that means that the computer code can know that it is us and therefore give us access to certain things. 
There are lots of different things that they're useful for, such as account access. You might have seen them used on social media, perhaps on Facebook, using facial recognition or Snapchat. And also, as I said, you can use them to access things like your tablet or your phone. They can also be used by metrics for access to buildings, so such as fingerprint access into a particular type of facility. They can also be used by the police to catch criminals, as I said earlier, and this is super useful when they're doing their detective work. So when we're thinking about biometrics, there are some things that we do have to consider, as well as all the opportunities, there are some challenges. One of those things is around accuracy. So how accurate a biometric is, if it's not accurate, it might mistake one person for somebody else. Something else we need to consider is the usability, so people's understanding. For example, do your granny and grandpa understand biometrics in the same way, perhaps, that you do? One of the other areas that we need to consider is around accessibility and how people understand and want to use biometrics and that might and how willing they are to enrol in them and that might differ from different cultures to different countries to different individuals. Another area to consider is around circumvention and the ease a trait might be imitated using some kind of substitute like you can see here with the masks that are being used. And the last thing we need to think about is making sure that biometrics work for everybody. Lots of different people in the world, lots of different heights, lots of different types of biometrics that we might be taking from those people, lots of different shades of skin, and we need to make sure that those biometrics and that access for systems can work for everybody. So, you must be thinking to yourself, how do I become a part of the identity industry? The good news is, is you don't necessarily have to go down a technical path to be a part of this incredible industry. You can follow whatever you're passionate about and still find your place. Take some examples of some of our wonderful members here at TrustStamp. Hi, my name's Adam. Uh, I had a very non-linear approach to tech, uh, having spent the last sort of 10 years in the Royal Marines, jumping out of planes, uh, skiing and operating in harsh environments. Uh, I just decided to leave the military earlier this year and transition to a role in tech, uh, working in tech sales. Uh, the industry is great, there's a real strong sense of camaraderie and it's a great working environment. And I can only speak for Trust Stamp, uh, but there's a real feeling of working together for one team. Uh, I urge anyone to consider a career in tech and the less linear your background and the more diverse the industry is going to be. Hi, I'm Matt. I came into tech through music. So it's not the traditional route that anyone would normally take, but it's the way I found myself in the industry. So I studied music at university, and then after studying music, I started working in media production, which was sort of a, a straight transition into that. After working in media production, I started working more and more with computers within that industry, and I found that I really loved working with computers a little bit more and working with data. So from there, I started doing some data analysis work, um, and then from there, working with data within sales. And this led me to my role here, in, uh, here at Trust Stamp, um, which is really good fun, very diverse. You never know what you're going to be doing every day. And you're always working on new different problems. And it's, it's, it's a lot of problem solving, a lot of working out how you're going to do things. So I would urge anyone who thinks perhaps they're too creative for a tech industry um, that maybe they aren't. So thanks very much for listening today about biometrics. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. We've certainly enjoyed ourselves teaching you all about biometrics. If you want to find out more about this exciting area of computer science, talk to your teacher. <laughs>